Hey guys, what's going on? I know it's been a while since I put out an actual useful video, but I wanted to uh, put out this video on a easier way of installing an OS on the Libre boards. Um, I have tested this on several of the boards and it does seem to work, so I figured I would put out this little process. Hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for everybody and you guys will be able to enjoy the process a little bit more. Uh, that being said, what you're going to need is all the things you see here. Um, you don't need everything, but this is just what I have. This is what I'm going to use. I have a 128 gig EMMC. This is the Alta board. So this is the newer Alta board. I've got one of those. I have two SD cards uh, because this one here I'm going to use for flashing the um, BIOS update because these boards do run a BIOS. So I'm gonna flash the BIOS update with this one. And then this is gonna be the one we're gonna run off of. Um, and then I've got a USB dongle here just for keyboard and mouse. Makes it a little bit easier to get into it and do stuff. So keyboard and mouse. Uh, and then this is a Wi-Fi adapter. This is one of the ones they sell on the uh, Love Our Pi. And you can get them on uh, Amazon or wherever. It's like a $10 wireless uh wireless card and bluetooth so one of those this is all you're going to need here let's go ahead and jump over to the next step now just to kind of get you guys going down the line so give me just a second all right so the first thing you want to do is go over to the raspberry pi uh, website and download the Raspberry Pi imager. Yes, I know there's other ones out there. This is just the method that I use. Uh, so you want to go over, download the Raspberry Pi imager for whichever version uh, or OS you have. In my case, I have Windows, so click on Windows, download it, and install it. After you've got it downloaded and installed, you want to go ahead and load it up um, or get it get it ready because we still have to go get the images and stuff so let's move on to that what you want to do is obviously go to the Libre website uh, when you're there you'll click on products up here and uh, it'll take you over to this site here uh, find your board that you have uh, in this case I have an Alta board so I'll click on the Alta that'll bring me up to uh, give me just a second here. There we go. We'll click on the Alta board. That brings up all this lovely information about the Alta board, uh, what it has, what it does, uh, all the different uh, uh, ports and connections that it has available. From there, you want to go to the downloads page. On the downloads page, the first thing that you want to do is make sure your BIOS is up to date. So you'll scroll all the way to the bottom here and you'll have other downloads. You have this EUFI BIOS. You'll click on that. You close that tab there, but then it brings you to this screen here where it tells you that please update your board if it is listed below. Uh, you can DD the image directly to the flash drive and insert it into your board uh, for updating the firmware. Since I'm using a Windows system, I uh, go through the through a little bit different process, but it does work. So I'm going to show you guys what I do. First thing you need to do is find your board in the list here. If your board is in this list then go ahead and click on the appropriate one. If you have any of the pre-production boards, the Solitude or the Alta that are pre-production, make sure you click the link for those. But in my case, my Alta board is not pre-production, so I can go ahead and click on this link here. And when you do, it starts the download. Now I've already downloaded it, I have a bunch of stuff here, but I've already downloaded it. So it's right here, it's done and ready. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pause this for a second while I get set up, but I'll show you guys what we got to do for the next one. All right, guys. So what you're going to want to do is load up the Raspberry Pi imager that you downloaded earlier. And uh, it may look a little different depending on when you're following these steps. But in this case, I need to click on the Raspberry Pi devices and go to no filtering, choose OS, and... Uh, we're going to want to go ahead and write that file. But before we do that, I kind of want to um, go back here and show you guys one other thing that you may want to get ahead of time, just so we can do this in a kind of prep as we go. Um, once you've downloaded that BIOS file uh, for the appropriate board, and again, this list of boards here are the ones you can do this for or need to do this for, uh, the Tritium, the Potato, and the, the original Renegade, 
they don't have a BIOS, so they don't need to be updated. But the rest of the boards, the La Ferrite, the Sweet Potato, again, the pre and production Solitude boards, the pre and production uh, Alta boards, the Renegade Retro and the Renegade Elite. These boards all need this. Um, as far as I know from my testing, this process should work for getting the BIOS working on all of those. Uh, but once we're done with the BIOS flash, uh, what you'll want, or once we're done getting the BIOS for the flash, you'll want to go back and uh, pick whichever OS you want to use as your primary OS. In my case, I'm going to be using Raspbian for both the flashing process and for the uh, OS. So I just need to download this one file. Uh, I find using Raspbian for this, this process seems to be the easiest. So that's the one that you want to click on. And then with Raspbian, after you've done the BIOS, you're going to click on the distros here. But if you read through, you will see that for boards with the EUFI or the UEFI BIOS, please use the plus arm 64.image.xz. Um, again, any of the BIOS boards, the arm 64 image will work. So you don't have to go in there and try and find a specific. Just find the arm 64 image for your BIOS boards. Um, and again, you can just click on the download the images from the from their distro server. In this case, uh, you may want to go with the latest and greatest, which is Raspbian 12. And then you're going to look for where it says, in this case, we've got like Raspbian Bookworm ARM64 with the plus ARM64. That'll be one of them you want. Or if you want to go with full, again, you just want to make sure it has the plus ARM64 at the end there. So find the appropriate OS uh, for what you're looking to do. After you've done that, you'll click on it, start the download. I've already downloaded this. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which will be, let's write these images using again, Raspberry Pi Imager. So you come back to the Raspberry Pi Imager and what you're gonna do is, uh, again, make sure you have no filtering set, click on choose OS scroll down to custom OS. And in this case, because we want to flash that EUFI BIOS first, click the drop down, show all files, and make sure you've got your files in a folder. I did unzip the, uh, or I use 7-zip to uncompress the XZ file. Uh, just, just something I do, you don't have to. Raspbian will, or the Raspberry Pi imager, will open that up, but I want to have the raw image file for the next step, so I would recommend you do that. Once we click on the all files, you'll see that that uh, AML, uh, the SPI flash, uh, that file is now there. Um, this is where the two uh, SD cards come into play. The first SD card um, is a smaller SD card, doesn't need to be very large. As you can see, it's only a uh, 24 meg file so it's pretty small um, so we'll grab that we'll click open we'll choose our storage in this case I've got a little 8 gig SD card in there so we'll click on that and we click next it is telling us that applying customizations no we don't need to for this part so we'll hit no and then it does tell me that all data will be lost on that drive I'll click yes make sure you select the appropriate drive if you see more than one in there Make sure you select the right one. At this point here, it is going to go ahead and write that small little uh, BIOS file to the SD card. Uh, this part can take a little bit, so I'm going to pause it here. It'll be a few minutes for me. It'll be just a moment for you guys. And when it's done writing, um, I will go ahead and uh, it does have verify turned on. Uh, I cancel the verification because it errors out during the verification process. Well, see here, it went so quick, but there you go. And actually, this time, it did work. Wow. All right, guys. Well, it looks like they may have updated something in the imager since the last time I've done this. But uh, So the flash has been written. It didn't take as long as it normally does. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, we just hit continue. And now we can go ahead and uh, safely eject the uh, SD card now. Uh, which it already did for us. So let's go ahead and take that one out. You hear my little doo-doo. Now we're going to grab the other SD card that we want to 
go ahead and flash with the Raspbian image and put that one in your computer. So go ahead and get that one ready. Uh, plug that in. Probably heard the doo-doo again. So there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and write the OS file. Uh, again, no filtering. And we want to select a new file. So we'll go down here. We'll choose custom again. And in my case, I want to use that Raspbian uh, the Raspbian full image that I have here. So we'll go ahead and click on that and click open. We'll choose our storage device. Now you can see I have a 16 gig SD card in there. That's what we're going to go ahead and do. This one is going to take a little while. So we'll go ahead and click next. Uh, there is no customization settings that I want to change. So we'll hit no. And then all of the uh, existing data on this will be wiped yes to continue and again I want to reiterate make sure you check that it is the proper drive I would hate for you to not uh, not notice and overwrite data on an important drive so just make sure you have the uh, proper drive selected start the process let it go again it's going to take a little bit for me but for you guys it'll just be a few seconds so I'm going to let this run out. I'm going to go ahead and stop this here for a moment. And when I come back, we'll be ready to get on to the next step. All right, guys, it's about to uh, finish verifying here, finalizing. And once this part's done, you'll get the little pop up there telling you that uh, you can remove the SD card from the reader. So go ahead and hit continue. And uh, for the next steps, we'll need to hop over to the device. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, gang, so we've got our two SD cards. Here's my 16 gig that has the image on it. Here is the smaller 8 gig that has the, um, the BIOS flash on it. And what you'll want to do is we'll flip this guy over in the SD card slot there. We'll drop in our SD card, obviously. Copper side, our tabs go towards the board. And then you'll want to go ahead and plug in a few things. I'm going to plug in an HDMI here so that this way you guys will be able to see what's going on on the screen. And then this is power. I will plug this in here in just a second, but your power, obviously, plug it into the power port. Sorry for the blur. Uh, my hands got in the way. But let's go ahead and jump over to the uh, screen cap now. And we'll get this thing powered up, and you guys can kind of see what it goes through in that process. So let me jump over to the... Uh, HDMI capture here while I'm doing that let's get the power plugged in there we go now this thing is going to boot up and hopefully there we go you'll see that it's going to run through it's currently updating the BIOS you can see it doing it down there at the bottom goes through the process says flash is completed so now the BIOS has been updated at this point you can just turn the device off swap the SD card and uh, boot this thing up with the image so let's go ahead now i'm going to power this down there we go i'm going to take my sd card out and swap it to the one with the os on it uh, same process as we did to put the first sd card in just take one out put one in and then plug power back in while we plug the power back in we're going to see it boot up here on the screen uh, there we go now it's running through the process of booting up and it'll take us into our Raspbian image. We want to make sure that this part is working before we actually install the uh, EMMC module. So let's go ahead and get this thing booted up, make sure that it's working. Currently, you also want to make sure you plug in your USB keyboard and mouse so that this way you have those and if in my case I'm using a wireless dongle make sure that's plugged in if you don't have your USB uh, if you don't have a wireless dongle it's a little bit easier just to plug it into a network so if you have a network cable available just plug it in but now that we have that part done let's go ahead and move on to the next steps here just to kind of run through this process we'll click on next US English and for me time zone is the Chicago so we'll set that part click next enter in a username and a password here you can put in whatever you want I'm Dan so I'm gonna put in Dan and then a password hit next now it's going to search for Wi-Fi's because I put the Wi-Fi dongle in. We'll give it a minute here to 
find a wireless network. This part can take a, a few. Realistically, we don't have to connect to the internet for this part, but it does make it easier because then you can just download the ISO file directly to the Pi. Uh, the other option is you can take that ISO file that you had and move it to a USB flash drive and then plug the USB flash drive in. So if this does not go here pretty quick, we'll, we'll go back to that step instead. Uh, I'm going to give this a minute and just see if it'll pick something up. And we'll go ahead and skip that part for now. Uh, we'll tell it to go ahead and use Chrome. And software updates we'll skip for right now because there's no point in updating this if it's not going to be the primary drive we're going to run off of. Install. Uh, if the install updates skipped, translation files will not be installed. And that's fine. Now we can go ahead and restart the device. So we'll give it a reboot here and see if once it reboots into the full OS, if we can gain access to that Wi-Fi. Uh, which I do believe we can. So we'll just go ahead and reboot, pop into the Wi-Fi, and uh, then we'll go from there. So let's just let this boot up again, kind of go through its process. All right, guys, we are back in the OS. Didn't take very long. Click up here on the Wi-Fi options. It does say we need to set our country code first. Uh, thankfully, I'm in the US, so I have to scroll all the way down here to the bottom. So let's scroll all the way down. Get down to the U's. And we'll make sure this is going to work. I have had some issues in the past where setting this right away did not work. But we'll go to US and hit OK. And then if it doesn't work, we give it another reboot. And sometimes it'll pick up. But we'll give it a second or two here just to see if anything comes up. There we go. All right. We'll connect to my Wi-Fi. Oops. Helps if I actually click on the box. There we go. And we'll connect. And there we go. It is connecting to my Wi-Fi. Once that part is done, we can load up our web browser. I did select Chromium as my browser in the start. You can pick whichever browser you want. There we go. Well, and of course, load one, get impatient, loads two. There we go. Now what we want to do is go back to the uh, Libre, whoops, Libre.computer. And once we get to the Libre.computer site, we'll go ahead and hit downloads again. And scroll down here to the Alta board, because that's what I'm using. But remember, if you're using a different board, which most likely you are. This process does work across several of the boards. Um, so just make sure you select the right one for your, the right board. Again, I am going to be using Raspbian on this just because I, I I like it. I know that they're working on some things and I have used Debian and a few other ones and Raspbian is just the one that I, I'm choosing to go with. Uh, you pick whichever OS you want. This process does work with whichever OS you're going to want to use. We're going to download the image distro. Again, we go to 12 because that's the one I want. And again, I would like to install just the... Uh, I don't want to wait for the giant 3 gig file. I'm not going to be doing uh, a bunch of crazy stuff. So I am actually just going to go with the light variant here, the 1.2 gig light variant. Uh, again, making sure that I select the one with the ARM64 after it. So plus ARM64, we click that. 
Now our download is starting. Let's say it's going to take about 10, 12 minutes. I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch this thing download. So we'll be right back as soon as it's done downloading, guys. All right, now that the image is done downloading, we want to make sure of a few things. So we've got the image and we're going to need to write the image to the EMMC. But first, we need to make sure the EMMC is installed. And since we haven't done that, let's do that. First, we need to shut this guy down properly. So we'll click on Raspberry, log out. Yeah, maybe. Click on Raspberry. There we go. And hit shut down. And then give this a minute. And when it gets all the way shut down, we'll power it off, jump over to the other camera, and uh, get the EMMC installed. Uh, there is 128 gig EMMC going in this thing. This thing's going to be a little monster with all that extra storage, and it'll be faster too, so that's pretty sweet. All right, and now we can go ahead and uh, get ready here. It looks like it's actually rebooting, so we may have to just wait a second here for it to finish doing its thing. All right, it is shut down, so let's go ahead now and pull the power. Power is out. Let's jump over here now to the other camera. Give me just a second while we switch that. All right. To make this part a little easier, I'm going to disconnect both cables. So we'll pull the HDMI out to flip the board over. You can see your little EMMC slot is right there. It's probably not going to focus, but it's right there. So we'll set this guy down. Move our little SD out of the way. Now we'll grab our 128 gig EMMC module out. What you want to do is you want to look. There's a little plug on the bottom here. It matches up with the plug here on the board. You want to make sure you line those up right before you uh, try giving it a little pressure. So I'm going to uh, kind of take my time here, make sure I get this lined up properly. There we go. It's fitting into place, so press it down. You'll hear a click. You may have heard that. Um, EMMC is now installed. SD card with the Raspbian image is still in there. Flip this guy over. Plug our HDMI back in so you guys will be able to see what's going on. Again, by USB for Wi-Fi and for the keyboard and mouse. And uh, if you're using Ethernet, that'll go in there, obviously. So now we'll go ahead and power this back up. But before I plug power in, let's jump back over. So... Get back over here to the capture card so you guys can watch this power up. Hit the old button there, or plug the power in. Let it fire back up, and we'll kind of go through the process. All right, gang, we're in the device. Let's go ahead and get started with flashing the EMMC now. What you're gonna do is go up here, click on the Raspberry. You're gonna look for, I believe it's under accessories. You wanna click on Imager. And we'll give that a minute. Same thing as before, you're gonna choose your OS. In this case, we scroll down to custom OS because the image we're using is custom. We're gonna find our image which in this case uh, looks like it did not finish downloading. So give me just a minute. I'm going to go through the process of making sure it's all the way downloaded and we'll start again. So bear with me while I pause and we'll be right back. Learning lesson, gentlemen and ladies and human beings in general. 
uh, make sure that you check that your image was completely downloaded before you do that. So since it was not, I'm going through the process here of re-grabbing the image. It'll take me a few minutes, so while I wait here patiently for the next 10 to 15 minutes, uh, you guys will only have to wait a moment. So enjoy the moment, but uh, learn from my mistakes and uh, make sure that you fully download the image and you verify that it is actually there before you reboot the computer and it having not finalized the download. All right. Now that that's done, let's go again, shall we? Click Choose OS. Custom. There's our uh, image. We click that and click Open. Now we need to choose our storage. When we click the drop-down, you'll see that we have the internal SD uh, card reader. It says 125 gigs. Again, it's 128 gig SSD, so quite certain that's it. The other one says write protected, so we know we can't write to that. And at this point, we click write. We click yes, and it is asking us for the password, so make sure you type in your password that you put in earlier. And now it should, if all goes well, start writing. And there it goes. We are currently writing the image to the SS or the EMMC storage on the the Alta board here. Uh, this process is going to take a little bit, but uh, once it's done, we'll come back. So you guys hang tight for one whole second. For me, quite a bit longer. All right, gang, that part's done. It's asking us to put in the password again. So remember, it's the password that you set up earlier. There you go. It says you can now remove the SD card from the reader. We'll click continue. And this is where it gets fun. Now we're going to go ahead and power this guy down. Log out. Shut down. And we're going to let it power all the way down again. Once it's done powering down, we'll remove the power from it. So let's... Uh, switch over here so you guys can see the see what we're going to go through here for the next step it's not a crazy scary process you just in my case unplug power we'll take the SD card out now we'll reconnect the power and we're going to be booting off the EMMC this time so we won't need the SD at all we put that up out of the way and you can see that it's now booting We'll wait patiently for it to go through the process here. As you can see, it's continuing through the boot and it is loading off of the EMMC storage. As you can see, we have to do the keyboard config you can see there no no SD card just our EMMC storage right there so go through your setup process and you are now booting from your EMMC I will just for the sake of everything kind of go through all this with you I'm going to do US English oh make sure we put in our username again I'm Dan and I got to type in my password for this. So give me just a second while we work on that. Confirm your password. And now it's at the login screen. So we have now successfully logged in. We did use the minimal. So we do have just a prompt. If you were to use one of the other versions uh, of the uh, image or whatever image you're using, depends on how yours will boot up but here we go I'm at the login screen put in my name put in my password and there we go I am now booted up so there you go that is the in my opinion the easier way than going through the u-boot process and having to set everything up this is working right off of the individual device you don't have to have a separate device to do this 
If this process helped you, great, thanks. I'm, I'm hoping it did. Please do me a favor. If you find this information useful and want to help incentivize me to continue to do videos like this or to do content um, similar to this, smash the old uh, like button there. Uh, give me a sub if you're not subbed to the channel. Uh, after all, subs are free and it only takes a, a second to do that. So it would be greatly appreciated. Helps me uh, grow the channel and helps my uh, sponsors for this. So Libre, again, did send me out this this Alta board uh, with no no uh, strings attached it was just a here's the board check it out tell me what you think and I decided to make a little video showing you guys an easier way to get an OS up and running on the Libre boards so this does work with several of the boards I have done this process on pretty much all of my boards that uh, I have I do have the uh, a variety of the Libre boards so this process does work through most all of them if you have any other questions comments things like that feel free to drop them uh, down below and or you can hit up Libre's uh, community hub they have a really good community a uh, really good group of people there that are willing to help out as well as they just started a discord so you can also hop over on their discord and if you have questions or any suggestions that you would like uh, to put out there feel free to put them there that being said guys my usual routine stay out of trouble stay out of jail happy 3d printing and all the things and uh, i'll see you in the next one bye guys